Welcome to another video. We have sine to the fourth of x, and we have to take the integral of that. I tell you that sine and cosine are the easiest trig functions to integrate because you know what the antiderivative is. It's just straightforward. You can always integrate it. But once there's a power that is not the first power, it becomes very tricky. Now, the higher the power, especially if it's an even power like the one we have, the trickier it gets. So, what must you know to be able to do this? Well, all the techniques of integration like u substitution would not work because you are isolated. Remember, u substitution for trig functions will require that there's another function. But here it's just sine, there's no cosine. So trig u substitution is not going to help. Integration by parts might help partially, but not fully. Um, what else do you want to do? Uh, whatever you want to do, it's always good for you to go back to your trig class and dust up your notebook and recall many of those trig identities because that's the only way out of this kind of problem. So the beginning of this video will be the most important part of the video. The rest of it, you'll be able to survive. Let's get into the video. The very first suggestion that I would make is, this power is too high, let's bring it low. Because remember, the lower the power, the easier you'll be able to integrate. So, instead of writing sine to the fourth, you would think, why don't I do sine squared squared? If you're thinking that way, you're correct. So we're gonna say that this is the integral of sine squared x squared dx. Okay, so now you're gonna say, can I do u substitution? Remember, don't do u substitution unless there's another this cosine besides sine. If there's no cosine, u substitution is not going to help you because the derivative of sine is going to generate a cosine and you can't get rid of it. So what you want to do is do something that can bring in cosine into the picture. So we're going to say that this is the integral of sine squared x times sine squared x. You see that? I don't need the parentheses, but I just wanted you to see what we're dealing with. Now, I need to replace one of these with the Pythagorean trig identity, which is sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So I'm going to say, okay, this is going to be 1 minus cosine squared x. So we do that, and we go, this is the integral of sine squared x times 1 minus cosine squared x dx. Now, if in your head you're beginning to think it's time for u substitution, you're not thinking right. <laughs> Don't do it. Because remember, u substitution would only help you again if you don't have square, you don't have square. That would work. But once there is square, you can't, you can't escape it. You cannot escape it. Okay, so you say, what if I distribute sine squared x? Well, if you distribute, you're going to end up with sine squared x minus sine squared x cosine squared x. That still doesn't help you because there's still going to be a square. Remember, we need the power to not be a square at all. So, what can you do to get rid of these squares? And that's where your old trig class will become very important to you. Let's go. Remember that the double angle identity for cosine says cosine 2x is equal to cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Do you recall this identity? You remember that cosine a plus b is cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. But if a is equal to b, you'll end up with this. Okay. Now, if you have this, have this memorized. The difference of two squares of cosine and sine will give you cosine 2x. 
And by the way, you can rewrite this as cosine x minus sine x times cosine x plus sine x. Keep this in mind because this might become very helpful someday. Okay, there's another way you can write this expression. If you replace cosine squared x with 1 minus sine squared x, the Pythagorean trig identity, replace this, you're going to have everything only in terms of sine squared x, and what you're going to end up with is this is going to be 1 minus 2 sine squared x. That's another identity you can use. In fact, this is what we're going to use to replace this guy. Then we get rid of the square. That's where we're going. And you can also go and say, instead of replacing this with 1 minus sine squared x, I'm going to replace this with 1 minus cosine squared x, and you end up with 2 cosine squared x minus 1. So that, ultimately, this is what you're going to end up with. If you use this equation and you isolate sine squared x, you're going to end up saying, sine squared x is equal to one half of, see, it's going to be one minus cosine 2x. That's what you're going to get using these two in an equation. Now, if you choose to use these two, because we need these two also to replace this guy, you're going to end up with cosine squared x equals one half of 1 plus cosine 2x. See, if you move this one away here, it's going to add to this, and you divide it by 2. That's what we have. So you need to have this in your head. Everything you see on the board here, if you're taking calculus, you want to have everything in your head. In your head. Okay, so let's go back here and replace this and this with these two formulas that we have, it's going to look a little bit messy, but it's going to clean itself up nicely. So here we go. So this is equal to the integral of, I'm going to write this instead, it's going to be 1 half of 1 minus cosine 2x. And here I'm going to have 1 minus, what's here? Well, this is 1 half of 1 plus cosine 2x. To make life easy, I'm going to distribute this now. So it's going to be 1 half plus cosine 2x over 2. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to make it 1 half. It doesn't matter, okay? So I'm going to write it as 1 half. Okay, I'm going to distribute this minus sign. So this minus sign is going to go in here and give you minus cosine 2x over 2. Close it and leave room for dx. Because we're multiplying, I can move this 1 half to the back and I can simplify what's in here. Let's see what it looks like. So we're going to have the integral 1 half. So I'm pulling this to the back and I have the integral of 1 minus cosine 2x. And in here, 1 minus 1 half is going to be 1 half. So I have 1 half minus, actually I'm going to write this as one half again, one half of cosine 2x. Okay, let's rewrite it. So this is equal to one half of the integral of one minus cosine 2x. And what I have here is going to be, let me pull out one half actually, it's going to be one half times one minus cosine 2x dx. I can move, this is another factor, I can move this one half all the way to the back, so this becomes one fourth, right? Yes, it becomes one fourth. So I'm going to write this as one over four, and I'm going to put multiplication sign here. Well, we can multiply these two together, and you're going to go, uh, don't do it. <laughs> because when I multiply these two together, I'm going to end up with a square again. Yes, 
it is easier to get rid of a square than to get rid of the fourth power. You see, we were able to get rid of the square here. So I am not afraid of, of generating another square. I'm a square master. Okay, so we're going to go here and say 1 over 4 times the integral. If you multiply this out, you're going to get 1 minus 2 cosine 2x. Two this times this is going to give you plus cosine squared 2x and you have dx. So you're going to go, okay, so how is, going to, how is he going to take care of this? What we had before was cosine squared x, not cosine squared 2x. Well, it's the same rule you're going to apply. Remember, we said that cosine squared x is one half of one plus cosine 2x. Remember, this was what we used here. We're going to use the same thing, but instead of writing x here, we're going to write 2x. That's it. It's the same thing. It's called the double angle formula. So instead of writing x, we're going to write 2x. And anywhere you see x, you just double it. There's another x here. So instead of 2x, you're going to have 4x. Nice. Nice. That's it. We're done. Okay, so let's go back. So this is going to be 1 over 4 times the integral of 1 minus 2 cosine 2x. Hey, don't touch this one. Remember, this is what we're replacing. So don't go write for, writing 4x here. Okay, plus, this is now going to be, cosine squared 2x is now going to be this. So I'm going to write here 1 half, and this is going to be plus cosine 4x divided by 2. I'm going to, I distributed this 1 half. So, what we're going to do is integrate this. There is nothing here that you cannot integrate, right? But, so we don't integrate twice. Let's put this one half with this one. It's going to give us three halves. So, this is one fourth the integral of three over two minus two cosine two x plus cosine 4x over 2 dx. Now, is there anyone who does not know how to integrate this? Nobody. Don't say it if you don't. Okay, here we go. If we integrate a constant, what do we get? We introduce the variable. So this is 1 over 4 times, this is going to be 3 halves of x minus, if we integrate cosine, we get sine, not negative sine, okay, sine. So cosine 2x, the integral will be, or the antiderivative will be, sine 2x divided by the derivative of the argument, which is divided by 2. So if we divide this by 2, it's going to cancel this too. So what we end up with is just sine 2x. Nice. We go here. If we integrate cosine 4x, we're going to get sine 4x divided by 4. But there's a 2 already, so it becomes we're dividing by 8. So this is going to be plus sine 4x divided by 8. Nice. Ah. And everybody deserves a good cup of coffee. Let's do it. That's your coffee. And never stop learning, because those who stop learning... Stop living. Bye-bye.